characters are always incredibly strong. In fact, there's two two of your actresses in, from your first play are here tonight, aren't they? Yes, there are two actresses who, who, by coincidence, played the same role in my very first play. <laughs> and one who's sitting in the one, two, three, four, fifth row uh, played uh, in Slag in uh, the Public Theatre in New York in the premiere in 1971. And in the second row is the person who played the premiere in Paris in 1971, by an extraordinary coincidence. Um, but you write characters who are extraordinary. Susan in Plenty, um, the part played by Judy Dench in Amy's View, Le, Le Ronde, uh, or the Vertical Hour in Nadia. Um, what draws you to these kind of characters, and how do you create them, and how do you, how do you get the voice of a woman so... Profoundly right, which is well. Not everybody thinks I do get it profoundly right, but I do like writing women, uh, essentially because of the um, guesswork involved. Uh, <laughs> it, it just seems to me writing is only interesting if you have to take an imaginative leap, and uh, I have absolutely no interest in writing autobiography. I, I wouldn't know how to write an autobiography, I really wouldn't, because I'm bored in advance, because I know, <laughs> I know the central character's feelings so well, why on earth would I wish to express them? Uh, whereas the whole imaginative leap required to another race, or another gender, or another time, or another age, seems to me what's stimulating about being a writer. Uh, there was an element that feminism, again, you know, because I lived, as it were, in the 1970s, which was a time when the sense that women's experience was so underreported and neglected and so little written about, uh, then specifically the minute I wanted to write about the Second World War, then of course the minute you write about women's experience in the Second World War, it's five times as interesting as writing about men's experience in the Second World War. Could we talk a little bit about Su uh, about can I just ask you know, um, about um, Susan Trahan in, yeah. in Plenty because she is such a powerful character and and of course was later played by Meryl Streep and she her experience of wartime and then never quite being able to live happily in peacetime. Well, this is for, this is common to both sexes uh, or both genders that. Uh, you know, people come back from wars and then find themselves displaced and not and disappointed. But it was combined with a sense of profound disillusion. Uh, by chance, I was just a, a, a moment ago re reading somebody who said, "I only really knew what I was doing in the Second World War." Somebody of that generation, uh, and they did. Um, there was a, a, a sense of knowing exactly what you were meant to be there for. When you then come back to a bourgeois society, which is incredible incredibly placid, and in the case of Britain in the 1950s, incredibly compromised, uh, then a sort of moral anger arises in you that there isn't anything to fight for, exactly what I described in the feeling of Palestinian youths in towards the turn of the century, that sense that it had been worth fighting to establish the Palestinian territory, and now they were watching that Palestinian territory be uh, the, the legacy of that Palestinian territory be squandered for all sorts of complicated reasons. Uh, but specifically, women had contributed to the Second World War in a way which was very little recognised. I grew up with a British cinema which was entirely men behaving heroically, ceaselessly, relentlessly, heroically. <laughs> and, and it was so untrue to the experience of the war that to begin to write radically about the Second World War in the late 70s was really the beginning of it. And I know also, uh, because I then later worked with Louis Malle, I know how hard it was in France for him uh, to write truthfully about the experience of the French in the Second World War. It's still a very charged thing to do.